So welcome to AIP's Philanthropist Speak series, an initiative featuring philanthropists in conversation with each other to discuss their motivations, approaches, and insights from their experiences. Today, I'm very pleased to have three generations alongside me. Uh, my mother, Mrs. Anu Aga, my daughter, Leah Padamji, and me, Meher Padamji. So Anu uh, was the chairperson of Thermax from 1996 to 2004 and successfully led the company. She turned around the company on the path to success. Uh, she's a social worker by training and has chaired the board of Teach for India, is now on the board of Teach for India as well as Akanksha, is very, very passionate about education in India. And she's also been very concerned and involved with human rights. Lidia Padamji uh, is a graduate in music technology and has recently joined Thermax in the heating division as product manager. Leah is very passionate about animal welfare, especially dogs. Um, she's also, of course, very passionate about music and um, and it's lovely to have her on the, on the show. So thank you, Anu and Leah. I'm Meher. Um, I chair the company uh, Thermax. I too am very passionate about education. Uh, my inspiration has been my mother, Anu. And uh, apart from education, I'm on the boards of uh, Akanksha. I chair Akanksha, as well as I'm on the board of Teach for India. Uh, I'm also on the board of Shakti Sustainable Energy Foundation, uh, which, which believes in moving the country to a low carbon economy, uh, because I'm very interested uh, and want to help the world, the planet, move to a greener space. And also very interested in music. Um, so, Leah, I'll pass it on to you. Sure. Um, so I can kickstart with the questions. Uh, Nano, can you please tell me when you started your philanthropic journey and what was the trigger? Who were the people who influenced you and which books have inspired you? Thanks, Leah. As mom has already said, by training, I'm a social worker, but I come from a middle class family and I could not engage in a substantial amount of philanthropy till our company went public and we had funds to give. Earlier, I would be involved with NGOs by giving my time and maybe a little bit of contribution. My son and your uncle Purush was very keen that a substantial part of our income should be given to social causes. Unfortunately, soon after his conversation about this, he met with an accident and he expired. I agreed with his view of giving substantial amounts towards philanthropy and wanted to honor his wish. I wanted to know which would be a credible and a good NGO to give to. And everyone pointed to Shaheen Mystery in Mumbai, who had started Akansha. I said, yeah. Uh, I made a special trip to meet Shaheen and we clicked. We got the centers. At that time, Akansha was in the center model. And we got the center model to Pune. And Shaheen invited me to be on the board. 15 years ago, when Shaheen wanted to start Teach for India, she asked if I would partner her since we have worked very closely together and I readily agreed. Though my philanthropic giving is mainly for education, there are a few causes, Leah, like you like animals, dad is for health, mayor is for greener energy and Western music. I would like to help a cause that protects human rights through journalism and activism. You asked me who has inspired me the most. 
I would say Gandhi ji has inspired me the most. I read his autobiography again and again and very much believe in his idea of trusteeship. Beyond a certain point, the wealth that we have is not for our self-indulgence and getting into more and more consumerism, but because that is never ending. You know, consumerism is never ending. Gandhiji advocated that we should be trustees of our wealth and use it for, us, for our social causes. The people in, in India who have inspired me are Azim Premji and Ashish Dhawan. You asked me about the book. I read many books on philanthropy, but the one that has made a deep impact and has struck with me is The Power of Half, where a family in the US decides to cut down their living expenses by half and use the other half to help the people in Africa, not just by writing out checks, but personally going to Africa and getting involved in the project. I think I've spoken a long time. Thank you. Um, Mom, how did your mother's philanthropic values influence your own giving journey? So, uh, I mean, it started a long time ago when we were actually kids. Um, with mom being a social worker, she used to take Kurush and me, my brother and me, to Isha Prema Niketan. She used to take us to Mother Teresa's home. And we would volunteer over there, over the weekends. Um, we would help in whichever way these two institutions wanted help. And, um, and we were so inspired that we decided that how can we help in our small little way? So the two of us, along with two friends, um, and we were all of probably 10, 11 years old, we used to put up plays and we used to invite our parents and their friends over and, uh, and then sell lemonade and cake during the interval. And we used to raise funds. And then we, all four of us would go to the NGO and give these funds to the NGO. And it, it just felt so good uh, in terms of being able to do something to help. And so I think that's where it all started. Um, I also remember mom once brought home two young boys uh, from the street after asking their parents whether she could take them in and give them an education. And these two boys, I even remember Rukum and Bhasha, they came when we were less than, we were about seven, I was about seven years old and Purush was about three. And, um, and these boys came in, they stayed in our home for probably 48 hours and then no, ran one away. Or oh, one, okay, and then ran away. And, uh, and when Anu actually went and found them again and asked them, they said, this is not the kind of life we want. You know, we want our independence. But, you know, all these little, little um, events have sort of triggered that sense of, uh, of we've, got, we've got so much that we need to be grateful for. And whether it's our time, our money, whatever, our skill set um, that we can give for other causes. And, and then, of course, when uh, mom brought Akanksha to Pune with the center model, I became very involved. Um, and later, Shaheen invited me to be on the board of Akanksha too. And she said that Anu and I bring, we said, but we are mother and daughter. And she said, it doesn't matter because you all are very different and you bring very different skill sets to the table. And she likes to hear both these different uh, inputs at a board level. And, uh, and so that's how I really got involved in education. And I've seen the kind of impact education has made on so many of our children from Akanksha, from Teach for India, from iTeach, from different uh, NGOs. And the way they've been able to, uh, because of education, which I believe gives you the opportunity of choice in life, uh, they've been able to choose the kind of uh, uh, career that they want to do because of which they earn, they're earning well and they've brought their entire family out of poverty. They bought flats for themselves, a flat for themselves. They send their children to a decent school. So, you know, the whole life changes completely for them. 
and um, and so i think it's it's just been very very inspirational so so thank you mom for that and uh, leah i want to ask you the same thing in terms of what how has your how has your grandmother and your mother motivated you to get into philanthropy well very similar to you but of course starting very young i remember doing lemonade sales and bake sales i even put up a concert and the tickets that i sold the money that i raised i had uh, put to a good cause but definitely the the starting young attitude was was always there but um, i think in terms of values the biggest value that both you and nano have sort of instilled in my brother and me would be to really be involved i think in the areas that you're passionate about and i think that really makes a difference within the education landscape i know you and nano have had so much ground experience and you've really been involved in almost like the day to day for a very for a period of time uh it's very easy to you know sit in one place and just give to a cause but to really participate in and give a significant chunk of your time and energy and effort is something i hope to i think imbibe going forward with my philanthropic journey okay so what are some i think this is to both you and nano but what are some definitive principles that inform and influence your approach to philanthropy who would you like to go first nano you can go first <laughs> uh you know i feel better if we focus on a few issues and go deeper in understanding rather than giving a little to many causes of course there will be some causes they may not be our main focus and yet i for example as i said earlier i want to support human rights in other words my preference would be to understand a sector for me it's education and give substantial amounts rather than sprinkle small amounts over many causes personally i'm not happy in giving to brick and mortar for infrastructure uh, i like to give for causes where i can see human beings of course buildings also help human beings in the long run but somehow i'm not we had given in the past but that's not my preference okay yeah for me um, i i completely agree with uh, anu in the sense it's been for me also i feel depth rather than scale um, is something that uh, that i believe in because then you can really really um, make a difference and um, i also feel a few other things one is giving a little longer term so you know not just giving one or two years because in the social sector impact takes a long time and therefore giving at least 3 years uh, provided of course all the milestones are met uh, but i do believe giving it over a longer time really then you can see the impact on in terms of what you're giving um the other as we spoke about earlier is giving our time um i think that's that that's just very very helpful in terms of our own learning and in terms of what gives me joy um the other is even though we give for a longer time how do we not become a crutch for that ngo so you know maybe giving uh, maybe keeping it to a certain percentage of their total um, funding and um, so that we can we can then slowly get ourselves out so that they don't if we don't become a crutch for them and the other thing that i also believe in is connecting the dots uh, in the sense suppose you have an education institution then we know that say for example malnourishment is really really important or we know that uh, mental health is something that we need to take care of so how do we bring in ngos other ngos where maybe other people are funding it you know in mental health or malnourishment or whatever 
and so that you really then pack it in into that educational institution to make an all round difference um so so these are some of the principles that i have worked with and and also i think one other thing is capacity building which is that uh, it's not just programs but sometimes ngos for example need somebody to fundraise um so can you help pay for that person um or the fundraising person in that ngo or say for example there is a very good program that will help the ceo of ngos to strategize can we pay to send that person to those programs so that after they come back from those programs they can do something entirely different you know so i'm quite uh, happy to fund those kind of uh, bits and pieces as well great um nano what are some of the biggest challenges you faced during your personal philanthropic journey uh lia one of the questions i had to resolve for myself and come up with an answer was how much to give and how much i keep for myself human human wants are insatiable and as soon as you have gratified one another pops up so where do i draw the line and how much do i give was the first thing another dilemma i had to decide is how much of my wishes i impose on the family or do i just explain my point of view and accommodate your interests you know it's easy to say i should but internally sometimes i cringe uh, when education is not given a great priority left to myself i would like to give most of my money to education and health especially malnourishment as mayor said they are so connected and reach out to a few other causes very few like now another dilemma is as mom said what percentage of the budget of an ngo do we support and for how long by not being mindful of this we could make an ngo dependent on us and not push towards sustainability having said that if an ngo is doing good work scaling up if we are helping them for even 40 years i don't mind as long as they are not we are not uh, creating a crutch for them they are growing and doing great work then another question is do we support one or two causes or go deep or sprinkle a little over many causes there is no right answer but thinking about this is very critical lia i want to ask you something what challenges do you see in the current philanthropic landscape and how do you think they can be addressed with the vastness of the problems faced by the social sector the challenge is deciding where to focus how would you decide um well i've just started out my journey so to speak but uh, i think maybe one of the challenges that i faced is that there are so many ngos so many organizations um, ranging from big to small and that's really amazing to see but i think how do you almost filter out and choose the right organization to support is really a challenge um i know right now since uh, my brother and i have grown up and we're slightly older we have different views so as a family we've decided to sort of diversify into different philanthropic areas and i think really looking for the right indicator so to speak is extremely challenging and important in choosing the right ngo to support for you i guess um i think another challenge would definitely be is that there are as i think mom had also mentioned that there are so many ngos that are working within the same space as well uh, and how do you create almost a bridge for these organizations to work together instead of doing everything 
on their own. And I think that's extremely important. That's a huge challenge. And that's definitely something that I guess the next generation should uh, maybe get into. Um, this is to mom and Nano. How do you decide which NGOs to give to? Nano, you can start maybe. Uh, I think the most important decision about choosing an NGO is the governance and the credibility of the NGO. As you said, there are so many we have to filter out. I would look at the board and how transparent the CEO is with the board and the donors. And I'll give you an example. At TA5, five years ago, we had to tackle with the Me Too issue. And I was very impressed that Shaheen chose to write to each donor to appraise them of the issue. I mean, they were also very surprised. And except one donor who decided to drop, everyone felt very good about this transparency. Another question would be, does the NGO fall in the category of our interest? And can I involve in a meaningful manner? If I cannot involve myself, substantial amount I may not, I will not give. Small amounts, yes. Another important criteria would be, is there any way I can measure my impact and the NGO, is it moving to its its goal and vision? Yeah. Great. Mom? Yeah, I think I think the um, Nano has said it all. The the only thing I would add, and I think she implicitly meant it also, is the person behind the NGO. Um, it's the credibility of the person. It's it's uh, in a way like also investing in any startup. I mean, it's it's the person that you look at, and uh, um, their their transparency, their passion, uh, their clarity of purpose. Um, what are they really trying to solve for? Um, yeah, I think I think it's it's really the person behind it all. How comfortable am I with it? Liu, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, as a young philanthropist, what advice would you give to somebody who would like to start on their philanthropic journey? So I would say I'm, I am still a young philanthropist starting out on her own journey. Uh, sure. It's not easy. <laughs> um, I think the key is to just take it step by step. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, starting young, um, just to know what you know, you're passionate about. So one would definitely be finding out what is your passion. For example, mom and nano, yours is education, human rights. Um, mine is animal welfare. So I've been passionate about animals ever since I can remember. Um, I think two would be as we said, start young, volunteer with local NGOs. I remember I volunteered not only at an animal shelter, but I did volunteer within the educational space at a school as well. Um, just to understand the space, understand the challenges that organizations face on a daily basis. Um, I think I definitely got a, different, got a different appreciation for what NGOs do and the people that are working in them just by volunteering. It's, it's not easy. Um, the next step would be, uh, you know, just meeting with different organizations, speaking with the people within the organizations, maybe doing similar work, maybe doing different work. How do they operate differently? You know, what are the, uh, what are they doing that works? What are they doing that doesn't work compared to others? Um, you know, how can you identify maybe some challenges or trends that, the same sector is facing. Um, so I think right now I'm in in that stage, uh, engaging with different organizations to understand their needs and priorities. So so that maybe I can learn, you know, where I would like to give or I would like to be a part of. So I think that's definitely um, the advice I would give. I'm still learning, but if I had to give advice, that would be it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Leah. Um, I think this is this question is to both. But uh, when my brother and I are in charge of our philanthropic giving, do you expect us to uh, give more or less to the causes that you and Nano believed in? Uh, yeah, you mean when I'm dead and gone? <laughs> well, uh, I would rely on your wisdom to decide. Uh, but if you chose to give most of the funds for animal welfare rather than human ca uh, causes, I would be turning in my grave with great discomfort. <laughs> I might even <laughs> come down and haunt you. <laughs> However, if it was for animals, if it has to be for animals, I would like to study the cause, get involved with the NGO you support, Ra rather than writing out mere checks. That would be a very important thing. I could come to terms with a, your decision to give most of it to animals, provided you are involved and you studied that sector. Then there will be a few pauses where you write a check, but you give substantial in in uh, amounts for a long period of time. I would like you to know the NGO thoroughly, its governance, the impact that is making. Be aware whether it is becoming solely dependent on you for finance. If invited, do join the board and be aware of the governance and values. I know it's not right for me to dictate even after I'm dead, but my views would be and hope would be and I would pray that you make sensible and wise choices. I will. <laughs> Mom? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I quite actually, I, I think we hopefully we brought you and Zahan up um, with the right set of values. And um, and so I would really respect and judge, uh, trust your judgment. Um, and I know that my passion and your passion cannot and sh should not in a way be similar. I mean, you have your own, you're your own person. And uh, does that mean that you do any less for education? Probably not. I mean, you could still continue with education. I think we have enough and more to give. So um, I would say that you could continue with what Nano and I have been doing, but also follow your own passion. Because I think it's important. You'll get a lot of you'll get a lot out of it, just as Nano and I have got a lot out of giving for what we are passionate about. I will pass this on to Zahana as well. <laughs> Mum <laughs> and Nano, are there some learnings that you can share in terms of what does and does not work while giving together as a family? Yeah. Till about four or five years, Mayor and I, by and large, decided how to give. And dad never stopped us. Your dad never stopped us how much to give. And But it was your dad, Feroz, who made us realize that if we want our kids to be interested in philanthropy, we should involve them, sit down as a family, explain our philosophy of giving, to whom we are giving, why. And I thought it was an excellent idea. But because before that, you were, you and Zahan were so fed up of the NGOs and the people who work. These were dirty words, Akansha, Teach for India, Shaheen, Saurabh. You know, you were fed up. And in a way, you were teasing us. But I think there was a grain of truth in it also. So when we sat down and really to explain what, why we are doing, how much we are giving, what is our future plan, I did see a great difference in the two of you. <clears throat> uh, and as I said, even though you make fun of us, I know you respect our work and decisions and getting you involved and not nag you but tell you is very important. Uh, you know, another thing 
that was per per perhaps my fault. I thought we didn't need a professional person from outside to manage our philanthropy, and that it wasn't substantial. And we have a family office where the CEO is keeping the account and everything. But thank God we brought in Anaga, who is a TFI alum, a few months ago. It does make a difference to do it systematically, and it definitely even helps. Uh, uh, our Mr. Podbare, who is our CEO of a family office, to keep accounts, receipts, everything. <clears throat> and the, again, I want to uh, repeat. And what I've learned is taking the whole family along is much better and far more sustainable idea than imposing our views. I have personally to learn not to. Impose my views and take a little while to convince you. Uh, so, for my grandchildren, uh, you have you have been very kind and you have not insisted that we give to the causes we want. Uh, but if when if and when you insist and I'm still alive, I can see that that could become a little issue. <laughs> Besides attending the quarterly meetings where we discuss our philanthropy giving, my hope is that you actively take interest in the social sector, and not necessarily for the causes that I believe in. I'm sorry, I'm harping this again and again. I'm realizing the power of collaborating with other philanthropists with civil mindset, and maybe you and Zahan can do that better than we have done. And as we, mom and I have said, I'm learning. Uh, I've learned, sorry, that writing a check is never satisfying. It's easier, but not sufficient uh, satisfying. And in the long run, the focus on a few causes and getting actively involved. I have also learned that giving changes your life far more than the life of the receiver. For example, when I see the transformation of life that has taken place in our children of Akanksha and TFI, I cannot tell you the joy and happiness I feel. Great, Mom. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty similar to now. Um, first of all, I, I feel that uh, the learning for me has been. Um, in fact, it's 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 wonderful when the whole family comes together, and uh, and in some ways respecting, trusting each other, seeing that we are different. Uh, Dad is so involved in healthcare. You and Zahan are so much more involved in animal welfare. Nano and I and education, and climate change and human rights. So I think I think just just the diversity really does help. You know, it it just makes it that much uh, richer because we can all learn from each other. And I have to tell you, Leah, you've made a big difference in me in terms of <coughs> loving dogs. I was not a dog lover until three years ago. And today I'm passionate about, about dogs. So it's really thanks to you. So, so I think this whole uh, sort of feeding each of, feeding off each other is is really very very rich and fulfilling. Um, the second thing, like Nano said, for me also cutting a check uh, gives me no joy at all. Um, I like to be involved. I like to be. Um, I I like to feel that I am adding some value, um, and that I learn more about the sector. I understand a little more about the sector before just giving uh, uh, writing a check. Um, third, I do, I do see a huge change after Anaga has come in, and uh, just the joy again and the fun that she brings in when we have our philanthropic meetings. Uh, uh, again, a big learning once a quarter the family meets, or once in two months, and um, Anaga has brought in different speakers. Um, she's 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 made it really fun in terms of. Uh, giving us various quizzes 
and uh, so i i think it's i think philanthropy should be fun especially for a family uh, and it brings the family together as well so so for me that's been uh, really great um, and and a big learning and i think what doesn't work is if it's been like my way or the highway you know because because then i don't think we are allowing each one to blossom and i think that uh, uh, i i think we are each individuals and getting that person to do what they are passionate about uh, and yet having respect for somebody else's passion um i think is really important um yeah and uh, maybe maybe we can just uh, close by any final thoughts uh, or anything that that uh, that you'd like that each of us would like to to say in terms of closing this uh, series um mom you want to go first yeah i think uh, as you rightly said there is so much joy when we do things together as a family and in a purposeful way we have fun together we have uh, we go on holidays that's fun too but this is also a deep fun deep satisfaction uh, which is not equated with any just spending on ourselves you know so it's lovely and uh, being open to professionals like anaka is another lovely thing and we are learning how to collaborate we haven't done enough collaboration with other givers that's another thing which we need to learn and being blessed with a grandchildren who are so respectful and wonderful of course they make fun and we have fun but they are lovely and leah i want to thank you also for creating some interest in the animal world especially our dog lara thank you <laughs> leah thank you mom <laughs> thanks nano um i think i would just like to close off by uh, maybe just bringing in the family bit again but uh it's really nice i think to be heard in in our meetings of course wisdom is there age is there but um, i think being actually heard about certain areas that maybe i am passionate about or my brother is passionate about and you know the whole family is is sort of coming together and listening to each other and we're we're open we're a lot more open and i think that's definitely something a change maybe that i have have witnessed in terms of the families working together i'm very happy that i've been able to impart this uh, love for animals to the two of you which is great and i hope that that continues yeah for me um uh just a big thank you first of all to both of you um huge amount of learning in different areas completely different one on human welfare and the other on animal welfare so um um i i feel that uh, i i just think that philanthropy really brings a family together um and it can be very enjoyable it can be um, very satisfying it can be very fulfilling and uh, and and yet hopefully one is also making a difference uh any little difference but i guess every little counts so with that i just want to thank uh, you mom well, i just want to i just want to acknowledge the part feroz played in involving the kids if he hadn't brought it to our yeah. notice uh we may not have i don't know how we are so insensitive yeah. but it's made a huge difference and i want to thank my two grandchildren for taking it very seriously and uh, just very great thank you <laughs> thank you thank, thank you. you thanks mom and thanks dia thank thanks, you thanks mom thanks mom hi my name is anaga i'm a journalist by education i've been a teacher a teacher trainer and a school leader 
And uh, after being in the education sector for the last 11 years, I moved uh, to working with Anu Meher and the family on their personal philanthropy. Um, as I was moving out of the school leadership role, I was thinking about the kind of impact that I wanted to create next um, and, and where do my strengths lie and where would I be the most useful? Um, quite frankly, a, a CSR or a philanthropy role was not on my mind. But when I came across this opportunity and, and spoke to a couple of people within my network, I, I realized that I bring in a lot of on-ground experience um, that can be of immense use to supporting in supporting different organizations. Um, on top of that, anyone in the Pune development ecosystem or within our Teach for India network is well aware that Anu and Meher have been such strong anchors for the cause of the, the cause of education and equity. The thought of being part of their decision-making process and support them in any way possible um, to amplify the work in the education sector was just very exciting um, and very hard to not apply for. Um, and, and thankfully, they trusted me. So here I am. It's It's been just over a year that I've been in this role, and it has been everything that I could hope for. It has given me the opportunity to apply my learnings from the ground. Um, it has challenged me to learn about the nuances of the sector, um, that the overall ecosystem, and, and not just limiting it to education, but going beyond education, the animal welfare space, or even health. Um, and most importantly, this role has pushed me to build empathy that is agnostic of the model and the cause, um, which I think has just made me a better human also, if, if I can make that extrapolation. Um, Anu and Mehra's basic approach to giving has been, and, and I'm simplifying this a lot, is uh, give money, but more importantly, give your time, give your energy, invest yourself intellectually as well as emotionally to an extent with the work that is happening. So you understand the impact better. And as basic as it may sound, this has influenced our giving strategy to engage with organizations at various levels in the ecosystem and not just limiting it to a kind of intervention. Um, it has encouraged us to engage with organizations in, in a more deeper fashion um, and, essen and essentially be their champions. Um, so our ongoing focus is, is to consolidate our impact that makes sense at a systemic level. Um, I've learned a lot while working with them. Meher has always pushed me to think about the entire supply chain and the last mile delivery and how can we ensure that whatever is happening is getting looped into how has it made the life of the beneficiary better. Um, she's pushed me to make active connections between our areas of work, between our partner organizations um, to better consolidate our impact. Um, Anu's questions and insights, especially about the people in our sector, they're just so instinctive, um, which of course comes from her vast experience and, and wisdom. Um, I, I've learned a lot from Feroz's input on the balance of depth and scale and how it affects our understanding of impact. Um, for someone who is just starting her journey in the philanthropic space, Leah's clarity on the kind of impact she wants to create is amazing and, and, and honestly makes it easy for me, especially because I'm just about now learning about the animal welfare space. Um, Zahan's curiosity to learn more about our partner organizations and build his own understanding of the de uh, development sector, sorry, has been great. Um, so many of his questions are toward building strategic clarity on the families giving, which has been great because it 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 shows commitment towards carrying on the legacy that uh, Anu, Meher, and Feroz have built. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's been great. Um, it it is well established that philanthropy in India has immense potential. Um, I believe that by engaging in such conversations that help us understand the thought process of philanthropic leaders, uh, helps us understand their challenges, their guiding principles. It can do two things. One, it can act as a trigger for other individuals who might have intellectually engaged with the idea of philanthropy, but may not have taken the next step. Um, two, it pushes existing philanthropists to take a more strategic lens while planning their giving. So immensely grateful 
um, for AI, AIP to uh, create this platform. And I hope we continue such conversations. Thank you. Thank you so much.